Well, thanks for the opportunity to be here. And I think this is one of these situations where the details do matter. Uh, the, the steps that we're taking are very incremental measured steps moving forward. And, and we continue, like other states, to look and analyze a number of different sources of data and, and analysts that have looked at that, that information. I think one of the, the most important pieces that Governor Kemp and, and his administration and our team has looked at is really looking at the abundant number of resources available at hospitals around the state. Uh, coming into this pandemic, we were concerned about the level of hospital resources and equipment. And as we continue to walk through this, we see an overwhelming number of our communities have surplus capacity with equipment and with hospital space to be able to combat this. But what resources do the small businesses themselves have to deal with this? Do they have the thermometers to check temperatures of customers coming in? Do they have personal protective equipment? Do they have all the disinfectants do, that they need? I mean, how are you enforcing these guidelines and making sure that when a customer or an employee enters those spaces, they are safe? Well, I think it's a great point to bring up because this is not a forcing anybody back to business. This is about just a small number of businesses that the state had to tell just on almost a minute's notice to shut their doors and to be able to back away. They, these are businesses that weren't able to telecommute. Uh, they weren't able to remotely work. But, but I think the important thing to understand, and once again, going back to the details matter, is that there is a long list, a very stringent list of requirements that these businesses have, just like many of the other businesses that are essential that they've got to follow. And, uh, you know, look, I think the consumer here is, is going to, to, to get, need to continue to gain confidence, and these businesses have to, to work towards that. Interesting point to bring up. Two weeks ago, I started making cold calls to CEOs from the, the largest businesses in our state and, uh, and small businesses, too, and getting their take. And what I understood from them was that every industry and every business is going to have a different recovery strategy. Every business and every industry has got to have their own unique, innovative ways to deal with this. Uh, one of those, for example, was, was a good friend, Joe Rogers, who is the CEO of Waffle House. He looked at me and said, Jeff, just give me the list of rules and regs, and I promise you we will be great at following them because our livelihoods depend on it. And Joe wasn't talking about his livelihood. He was talking about the tens of thousands of employees that are worried about their next mortgage payment, worried about putting food on the table. He will follow those rules. I'm so proud of the millions of Georgians that have personally sacrificed to get us to the point where we've been able to flatten the curve and looking forward to continuing to take small, incremental steps forward. I'd like you to elaborate on that. Which CEOs are asking you to reopen these businesses? Because we've seen many mayors in the state of Georgia. We've seen religious leaders. We've seen uh, franchisees say they don't feel comfortable opening until the middle of May. So who's telling you to do this now? Well, look, I, I think it's important to understand nobody's being forced to open. In fact, I would imagine that a number of businesses uh, don't feel comfortable that they've got the, the access to the equipment yet to do the things they need to do or the access to the labor to be able to 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 sterilize and clean their facilities. And so they, they won't open. Uh, I think that it's important to understand that the only way through this is with innovation. It is with an understanding that, you know what, the government's not going to create one one law or one rule that makes this come back to normal. We've got to understand that. Uh, this is a first step in figuring out what the new normal looks like. But, you know, look, personal responsibility goes a long way in this country. It's one of the founding principles I believe in this country is personal responsibility. And certainly we in Georgia have been doing a hard, we, we've been working really hard to get to where we're at today. A lot of work to go. Uh, I'm so proud of the innovation that's coming forward, teleeducation, telehealth, um, telecommuting. You know, I, my big economic mantra up to this point has been I want Georgia to be the technology capital of the East Coast. And certainly, as the optimist okay. I am on the backside of this, we'll have an opportunity. Finally, the governor said that cases will inevitably go up because of this. What metrics are you using to decide whether it's safe to continue proceeding as is or whether you'll need to pare back some of these guidelines? Well, I think we'll continue to look at a, a number of different data points. Both the, the Trump administration and Vice President Pence has almost virtually every day been in communication with Governor Kemp to talk about this, but I think it's important to understand that we need to govern through the facts and the figures and the data, and not just out on social media blogs or on, on, on pundits that are wanting to just have five-second sound bites. This is important to get right, and we're certainly paying attention here in Georgia.